Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Aquarius May 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant and I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one Clairvoyant readings for Aquarians over the course of the last month and you know who you are. It's been great to get to know you personally and if you might be interested in having a one-on-one -on -one Clairvoyant reading with me, just check out the information that's in the description box below. Now, of course, I have to charge for clairvoyant readings. It's just the way it is, I have to. But what I don't charge for, and it's separate to the readings, the clairvoyant readings, is healing. Now, when I was born, I was provided with the gift of clairvoyance and also the gift of healing. The healing comes through me, not from me. But it's on the basis that I receive no benefit from it myself. And so it is offered to you free, without obligation. And uh, without charge, it is the free lunch. And uh, I don't sell or recommend any products or services, whether from me or anybody else. We just concentrate directly on that and it doesn't take all that long. So if you're interested in that, just have a look at the description as well. Now, what we do know, and as the subscribers know, and oh, it's always so good to see the subscribers. Do you know I see you as being part of my extended family? Truly I do. I always love to see you each month and I enjoy your company and thank you for having me in your home. Do you know, you know that there are no video advertisements breaking their way into this content and so you get to have the experience undisturbed by commercial intrusion of advertisements. Isn't that right? And now, uh, what you also know is that all we need to do is to take five cards because five is all we need as they speak volumes to us, don't they? Haven't you found that? It's incredible the amount that's there. There's the Nine of Pentacles. What a splendid card to have. There is the Knight of Wands, equally so. What's this? The Three of Cups. It's a hat trick. Three great cards in a row. What's this one? The Hierophant. The Hierophant has got some good things to say to you, I'm sure. And let's have a look to see what might be in here somewhere. Just feel like dragging something out. And what is this? There is the Eight of Swords. Splendid, beautiful image there. Well, why don't you come? As is our usual practice. Come and sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do the reading for you. Let's have a look first at this Nine of Pentacles, shall we? And see what is going on in the painting that's here. Now, what we have is a refined woman. Now, of course, this is my take on it, but you may have different takes on these pictures that are here. Now, there's a the woman enjoying the beauty of her lovely garden. She has made a selection of delicious fruits and carried them in a bowl on her head. Well, the lady's colorful jewelry is a symbol of her wealth. Her earrings and ring consist of yeah, nine beautiful mandalas, which are like geometric patterns that you focus on to, well, to obtain often in meditation in Tibetan Buddhism. Now, the, the woman has a healthy relationship with money and her financial independence allows her to enjoy the fruits of her labor. Now, there's a tame blue bird sitting on her hand and that symbolizes her sense of freedom and joy. The small cup on top of the bowl, I think is a reminder that the road to success is a slow, steady process. Now the astrology of the card in this position is that of Venus in Virgo. Well, Venus is about uh, relationship and emotional satisfaction. It's also about money. Did you know that? And well, these are all expressions of your interests and values, aren't they? And in the sign of Virgo, that's the earthy, mutable sign, there things can take root and grow. So what I'm seeing here for you is the power of growth and an external increase, material increase. There's also an emotional, spiritual, and intellectual advancement. There may well be some financial luck around you, you know, at the time. Certainly there's a great degree of satisfaction and well-being, love, creativity, maybe fertility for somebody who is looking for some fertility. And there's a sense of you enjoying your leisure. Now, this is a period where you will be very sensual, I think, and people are going to find you very sensually attractive. 
There's almost a sense here of great self-confidence and self-reliance here as well. This is about you enjoying the abundant pleasures of life and a reward in some respects for your past efforts and a certainly a heightened sensual awareness. It indicates that the, the attainment of material gain is approaching or has just arrived. Now this can take the form of money or just things or other riches. Perhaps a payoff for past efforts or people returning favours for you. It can also refer to a new relationship blossoming here and being surrounded by good company and a sense of bliss in your surroundings. Now, I think what this is saying to you is just hold on, take a break from your busy life and enjoy the pleasure of your senses. Now, when your experience and creativity are filled with joy, you are filled with love and will benefit from all situations. Now, uh, this is saying that you need to enjoy the pleasures that are available to you and build on your own abundance in life by accepting all that life has to offer. Everything, light or dark, is a gift and gets you to grow. You realize that. I think relationships are enriched or an encounter brings deep inner happiness. You've got to em embrace those things in life that make you happy now. I think that there's some degree of comfort around you which comes about as a result of also good luck as well as good management. And there is a peace, isn't there, which comes from self-sufficiency and not having to be dependent on others. This also indicates a wealth that is in full harmony with your ultimate goal. Now, it's interesting that you should have pulled that card first because it is telling you what's going on. And this is also, this is being pushed away, this Eight of Swords, by this fiery knight and by the Hierophant here. Let's have a look at it and see what it might say. I think you're overcoming something and you have overcome something which is bringing with you this nine that's in here. Now here we have an angel with large wings that seems to be trapped inside a birdcage surrounded by eight trees to go with the eight of swords I suppose that stand like soldiers guarding him. Now the angel is bent over seemingly in despair and in his desperation to escape he is unable to actually think about and work out his situation because he can easily fly up and away, can't he, from this sort of prison through this open top, but he is unable to see the way out and he remains confused and powerless. Now, this is Jupiter in Gemini here. Now, Jupiter, of course, is the great benefic of the solar system and, well, of astrology, and it is bringing with you good luck, prosperity. But Jupiter can be weakened a bit by Gemini. It's, it's, it's in detriment in Gemini, and it, so its great powers can be brought down a little bit. And... Gemini, of course, is, is that sign which comes about where everything in the universe, kind of life, bursts into all corners. So you've got thoughts and ideas flying everywhere, and it could be some confusion and distraction around here, which is really similar to what the angel is going through as well. So it could well be that you had been, because this is on the way out, having some feeling, or, or you could be going through it now, and it is going to disappear, a feeling of restriction or interference may be waiting for developments in something. But you will have an active mind and there are choices open to you and you should have faith. There's a deep intellectual knowledge surrounding you at this time. Now, as I say, you can have been or going through the process of getting rid of a feeling of restriction or being held down or that something is on hold or your movement is blocked. Now, this could mean that you are forced to wait for developments outside of your direct control. Eh, so what? This happens to everybody and it's no problem for you. Perhaps you are awaiting news or a confirmation or something or a response back from someone. Well, just to be patient and allow things to 
unfold at their correct pace. You know, the universe is not like a vending machine. You don't put the money in and get the thing out straight away. Alternatively, maybe you're feeling held back by circumstances or, or have some inner blockage that made it difficult for you to see the way ahead. Like this angel, you could be feeling powerless or restless. But still, your mind and to release the tension in order for your higher self to unfold events on your behalf, to also allow Jupiter to do its work and sort things out. You are urged, I think, to free yourself from this intellectual paralysis by letting things settle and develop. Try not to think about the matter. Instead, put your thoughts into something which is more positive, relax, chill out, and further developments are going to bring you greater understanding. Now, it could be that you're under some pressure about something at the moment. Are there some deadlines that you need to meet? Are you feeling burdened by an intense responsibility or is there some emotional strain here? Now, in most cases, this pressure can be partly self-inflicted or is projected onto you by somebody else. Well, there's only so much that you can take on at any one time, you understand. And maybe this is a reminder to you of that. Perhaps you should make others aware of it. I think you're being encouraged to free yourself from restrictions of guilt as well, with the knowledge that what you are doing is the best that can be done with the resources that are available. You do have choices and you should not allow anyone to force a choice on you or hold you back from making one. Now, this card can refer to the accumulation of great knowledge as well, which is what I do see here with you, but you've got that fine Aquarian mind anyway, do you not? And it could even be some, for somebody here, a mystical insight. Now what's on the same horizontal? Let's have a look, shall we? And it is this, oh, this is interesting. Is that what I think it is? It is, yeah. Let's have a look and see. Well, the Hierophant, well, again, you can have your own interpretation, but I think that the Hierophant is represented here by an owl sitting on a branch of an old tree with strong roots. Now he is reading out of a book in front of a little girl, eagerly sharing his knowledge and wisdom with her. Now the girl is listening very attentively and this old tree represents, I think, traditions grown out of centuries, probably. And I suspect that what's going on here is that, well, what I'm getting is that just for this month, go along with traditions or rituals which have been, which you've been brought up with, where other people in like family or a close circle of people are involved, even if you don't agree with them, Kind of just go with the flow with them for this month uh, to keep the peace. Now, this is Venus again. Wonderful Venus. This time in the sign of Taurus with the moon exalted. Now, because the moon is exalted, it means that Venus is receiving the moon into her sign of Taurus as an honored guest. And so the moon's energy, personality here is very constructive. Now, sometimes the moon can be a problem, I think, but here it's very, and there's the moon there, very constructive to you. And it's about going in. It's about seeking an inner truth, I think. Uh, and again, there's this established beliefs and traditions theme coming up here, probably to do with a religious authority or the establishment, law and order type of things. Don't go creating any revolutions at the moment. Have some patience and you get through what you need to do to live with other people. Now, nevertheless, I think that this energy here is saying to you that you should trust in your own interpretations of reality with greater certainty of belief. 
Now this energy is telling you, and you will see the deeper pattern in things or the wider picture of a situation beyond the surface details of things to more deep-seated levels. Now, I think that this is also saying that your personal talents, knowledge, and I've got to say it, even a sense of genius about you, which you have developed over time, are now going to be employed by you with full attention. Perhaps a work assignment is set before you. Now, in this instance, this energy is saying to be focused and diligent in recognizing and developing your true calling and relationships. This can imply that a, a phase of deeper trust and establishment of a more permanent partnership is developing now, on an inner level. This is saying that you are now maybe, I think, ready to teach and to encourage and to mentor others. You have the opportunity to be a guide and a mentor in your particular area of expertise, which in some respects you are really quite a master at, you know. Now, by passing on your knowledge, you understand you will gain great respect and a deep sense of worth. Now, there's also with you here somewhere a great sense of, com of great friendship and ex exuberation and celebration. And in fact, it must be this central energy that's here. And what this is saying, well, look, it's a bright, sunny day. Well, that's a good thing for a start, isn't it? Now, there are three women here who are celebrating their friendship and spending time together as a united group. Now, they're all individuals, as you are, but they are having fun playing with three hoops. Now, I used to play with hoops when I was a little boy, hula hoops, they used to be called back in the back in the uh, dinosaur period. And, and that connects them and binds them together in their appreciation, honor, and respect for each other. Now, each woman is an individual, is unique, just as you are. There's nobody else like you, is there? Yet they all share common goals and a sense of camaraderie. Now, uh, this is, Astrologically, it's Mercury in Cancer. Now, Mercury is that great planet of communication, of intellect. It's the go-between between the divine and humanity, Mercury. And it's in Cancer, which is the most, arguably, the most receptive and nurturing of signs. And this is saying that you will embrace the simple joys. This is going with this Nine of Pentacles here, you see. Going, you're going to be enjoying and having fun with and feeling satisfied, particularly with the simple joys of life. And you're going to welcome the love and support of others. Now this stands here for simple yet magnificent pleasures that touch the depths of your precious heart. Now, this is a sign of intimate feelings, that you are deeply touched by the kindness of another, or that you have gifts to offer to other people. We were just talking about mentoring and teaching, weren't we? Now, this here is the pleasure of being loved and returning love. And I'm thinking here that it's saying that you must offer support, affection, love, and your talent to other people. And certainly, because Mercury is in the plane here, you should tell someone, maybe one, two, three special people here, those people that are close to you, of your love for them, and even express goodwill towards a stranger and for all life that's surrounding you. I think that teaching is symbolized here, so is healing. This relates to close friendships, groups with a shared interest, or those who celebrate and support each other. Now often, this energy I've seen 
can refer to a particular person in your life, a friend, a family member, a companion or a partner. This is also calling for you to embrace life inwardly and externally and give unexpected gifts of joy or give unexpected acts of pleasure, whether to those that you love with in relation to the last one or people that you meet or take the time to express appreciation of someone's unique qualities in an intimate and kind-hearted way. There's a really mysterious energy about this which can be expressed through gifts of love, love letters and tantalizing surprises. I think this is teaching you to open fully to the bliss of life until your heart is overflowing into the hearts of others. Now, in your work life, I think that this is symbolizing some good teamwork, collaboration and creative interaction or participation on a personal level. It is your inner streams propelling you to external success. I think that this is saying that you are soon to receive a getting the image of a, of a, of a treasure chest, a treasure. Uh, so it's a sign of plenty. You're going to receive plenty, but this is what this is also saying here. And in love, this card represents openness, intimate communication, and the development of feelings, as well as a great degree of passion, desire, and sensual vitality. And then that takes us finally, I think, to... There was a horse lady around... There she is, yeah, that... Uh, Knight of Wands. Well, this is interesting, is it not? Let's have a look here. And here we have um, the Knight of Wands depicted as a daring horsewoman who's jumping through a ring of fire. Now, the background is dark and ominous, I suppose. Only the stars illuminate the scene and reflect the knight's courage. Her dangerous flames surround her, but her confidence makes her unafraid of taking risks. Now, she can be impulsive without thinking of all the dangers that lie ahead, uh, certainly. She is full of energy and longing for adventure. Now, I think that to do with you at this time or in your thoughts are going to be Leo. Cancer is what I'm getting. This is demonstrating to me that in line with what we've spoken before, and it's a confirmation of your swift and perceptive willpower, you will be inspired. You may actually find that you are quite artistic, you know, and that can be expressed in any number of ways. And you're going to be enthusiastic about things and adventurous, spontaneous, perhaps. There's some degree of idealism here with you, a humanitarian bent towards you, I think. And I do see lust that's around here. But you'll be generous, trustworthy, intuitive, perceptive, and, uh, and resolute. Now, you will blaze with passion and inspiration towards the fulfillment of your lusts and aspirations. Now, she bursts with energy and life, enthusiastic, high-spirited, and impassioned. Her fiery hunger for adventure consumes any fear that would cause others to delay. So you're going to push on with things, I think. You'll have an, an impulsive and strong bias towards things. And you'll dare to go, I think, where others fear to tread. And you won't be afraid to experience new things or conquer greater heights of adventure, creativity or sensation. And I think you'll forcefully pursue your passions with an explosive enthusiasm to reach for all the excesses in life where there's something of a youthful exhilaration here. Now your fire will be insatiable and irresistible. Other people are going to find you very attractive. You'll be very seductive, lustful, 
and in a sense you'll be the, the poster child of sexual glamour. You'll be very charming, enchanting, and flaming with spontaneous desire. But you will, I think, direct the blazing flow of creativity through your, through your fine mind into projects or artistic works. You will surrender to love as you rise above yourself even, illuminated with the joy of life. Now, even though I think you could be impulsive and maybe take some risks, your energy nevertheless is going to be sensibly directed. You're going to be resolute and you're going to enjoy and will anyway express your opinions. Now, I think what is going to happen here that by questioning and exploring all the possibilities, you will build a creative thought map, if I can put it that way, that is both active and able to be reconfigured as circumstances change. Well, what a fantastic spread of cards for you. Well done, you. I trust you enjoyed that as much as I did providing it to you. I certainly enjoyed providing that reading to you. I always do, though, don't I? I'd love to see you, and thank you for having me in your, in your home. I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate the, uh, the confidence that you place in me and the warmth which you show to me. Now, I'm not going to see you again, probably, unless you contact me for a reading or for a healing until next month. But until then, remember one thing, and one thing only, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.